Coming up on this summer's Londoners News. We have some exciting events coming from all across the capital. Freedom of Expression campaign group Index on Censorship kicked off Banned by Beijing. And our reporters spoke to artists and dissidents about their experiences of Chinese censorship in Europe. And Mix, Mag and Altenet are celebrating Pride Month with an immersive exhibition near Tottenham Court Road. Also to come, delightful childhood nostalgia can be spotted around central London with Morph's epic art adventure trail. First up, there is growing evidence that an emboldened Chinese Communist Party is employing a range of tools aimed at pressurising or manipulating foreign entities to respect and align with the CCP's political agenda. Index on Censorship's exhibit, Banned by Beijing, running until the 10th of July, seeks to raise awareness of the CCP's subversion of freedom of expression in Europe. Our reporters went to speak to artists who have faced this kind of cross-border repression. We're here tonight at St John's Church in Waterloo for the launch of the Banned by Beijing art exhibition. We're here for a night of music, art and testimonials by artists and creatives who have been repressed by the CCP. Today uh, we will exhibit 11 paintings, including a um, thousand hands men, which commemorates the anti-extradition movement in Hong Kong in 2019 and also have Red Brick War People, which commemorates the siege of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University during the movement in 2019. And then we have Tank Man and Scale Man, which com commemorates um, the June 4th massacre in China. In 2021, we held an exhibition in Hong Kong. Some pro-CCP media journalists came under pretense to our exhibition. The worst are accused by the pro-CCP newspaper of violating the Hong Kong national security law, um, yes, just because of our paintings, and then the police even came to our studio to threaten us, so we fled Hong Kong in a rush. Uh, after the police left Tavernus, and um, there was a man who looked like a tri gangster, rudely ring our doorbell and wave a big stick in front of us to threaten us, and we were scared. Yeah. We secretly closed our painting studio. My father has lung cancer. Um, so I'm afraid that I will never be able to go back to Hong Kong to visit him in my lifetime. We had an exhibition last year in Louis uh, in London. The CCP journalist came to our exhibition and reported us again, even in the UK. We hope uh, we can see Hong Kong liberated one day in our lifetime. And sometimes we hesitate to speak out because our relatives are still in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But if we shut our mouths up, why don't we just stay in Hong Kong? So we yeah. need to speak out. Yeah. Why the government so scared of art? We always say that if a painting can overthrow a government, then the government must be very fragile. Uh, today's event, we are using art to highlight the atrocities happening in various parts of China. And uh, I represent the Uyghur community. I'm leading the campaign in this country, Stop Uyghur Genocide, because genocide is happening, has been happening since 2016. You know, music is a way of kind of escape from the reality sometimes. It, it makes you travel to your homeland when you, when you sing the songs uh, from the different part of that land. We don't have many Uyghurs come, came to uh, this event, not because they don't want, because they're scared. So to that extent, even my music, even my concerts, my people dare not to come because they know that there might be people watching. Uh, you know, amongst uh, among the audience. The most beautiful part and most new novel part of today was listening to the traditional music of the Yuga community. That was definitely an experience I've never had before, even though I've read so much about the Uyghurs, so, read so much about censorship, read so much about um, the issues that are happening in China, about the genocide, etc. Even though I know so much about these topics, to actually listen to the traditional music of a group of people that have been, that are so far from their home, um, that was definitely a new experience. And what have some of the challenges been in organising this event? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> So I think the main challenge I was I was running the exhibition um, was of course familiarizing myself with the artists in light of the security issues that come with working with artists who are constantly being repressed, artists who are being constantly harassed. So I think that would be that was a challenge 
or it was something new that I never had to do before. Um, so, so that of course involves a lot more communication, a lot more channels to get to make sure that the partnership is working well all the time. Um, so I would say that would be that would be the main the main challenge of it all. The exhibition will be on at St John's until the 10th of July, where you can see the work by these artists and send a postcard to Jimmy Lai. Back to you in the studio. Next up, Mixmag, a British electronic dance and clubbing magazine, are celebrating Pride Month. The magazine has teamed up with Alternet to showcase a 360 degree immersive exhibition in the heart of the capital. The London is Pride event is being run throughout the month of June and the 360 degree exhibition is soundtracked by DJs Jaguar, Absolute and Raven Mandela. Our reporters went to check it out. In the hustle and bustle of central London, just outside Tottenham Court Road Station in Soho, a London Pride Month event has seen a larger daily footfall than even the British Museum. This immersive 360 exhibit, hosted by Mixmag and Alternet, aims to highlight and celebrate London's queer parties, artists and collectives. For every Friday of June, DJ sets from Absolute, Jaguar and Raven Mandela will soundtrack the LED display of photography, flyers and posters from across the queer dance music history of the UK. To find out more, we spoke to Mixmag's managing director Nick Stevenson and editor Patrick Hinton about why they created the exhibit and what impact it has had on the London Pride scene. Mixmag approached Alternet and we wanted to put something on to this new space. I've gone down there for the World Cup and seen this huge new space that seems to have popped up out of nowhere during lockdown and everyone's talking about it so we thought let's do something for them or at this location. And it's Mixed Metaphors' anniversary this year, so we pitched an idea to them saying, let's do a celebration of our anniversary with like the, the last 40 years of dance music, with all of our covers and our streams. And they said, yeah, we love the idea, but can you help us with something else? Could you do something for Pride? Now, of course, Mixed Mag has been working in LGBT space since our inception. Um, we've always worked uh, making sure that there's safe space for people to dance and to enjoy music. And house music comes from the gay clubs in New York and Chicago and in Detroit. So this is something that has always been part of our culture. So when we when they said to us, can you do something for privacy? This is perfect for us as well. So what we went about doing is putting together something for them where we collected all the flyers from all the LGBTQI plus nights around the UK, predominantly London as well, showing the history of the events that have been happening in our country and in the capital. What we're hoping to do with the exhibition is not just for people to come down and discover the history and the culture and the music, but also it's a new place for people to come and dance because these are 30 minute sets that are played loud on the huge systems uh, with great visuals and it just means that hopefully people in the centre of London can be getting off the tube or in between commuting or on their way home and wandering to outer and start dancing around which should be fun. There's just so many like important collectives and people just doing such amazing things within the LGBTQ like, plus community in dance music in this country. So we wanted to make get as many of them involved in possible. And they just visually they look amazing. Like they make the, they make these put so much effort into their flyers and their outfits. And the people who attend the party just wear the most incredible clothes. Uh, the people who design sort of all the artwork put so much effort into all this amazing colourful imagery. Um, really strong aesthetically so we wanted to have such an amazing space and such an amazing sort of visual area to take over that would be a perfect way to sort of draw attention to what they're doing with their work and just how great the sort of all the stuff they're doing and all the parties they have are and just what an exciting kind of community it is um so that's what we went with that and the djs we wanted to pick djs that kind of represent different communities we wanted to have a bit of variety we wanted uh so yeah we got um jaguar who's just like doing amazing stuff. Um, she helped for the queer community. She brings through a lot of uh, like young uh, artists. She's really focused on upraising the new generation. Oh, so that's brilliant. Um, then we have Raven Mandela, who's obviously a dancer and looks incredible. Like dancing is such a strong sort of part of the LGBT community. And he's been so progressive and sort of pioneering with his kind of dance moves. Like his iconic sort of fan. Yeah, I think he, he kind of brought that to Ibiza and everyone wears that now. Everyone's always flapping fans. So he's an amazing artist for that. And then Absolute has just been an incredible sort of linchpin of the London dance music community for years. Um, he's now getting his years as sort of one of the leading artists in the country um, for what he does. 
um, they all just play incredible music and yeah, really, really represent the sort of values that that community stands for. So they felt like great options. Finally, fans of much loved character Morve have formed a fun, family friendly sculpture trail for people to follow through some of London's most famous streets. It is the first accessible step free art trail in the UK, organised by the disability charity WizKids. Accompanied by a rather persistent accordion player, our reporters followed the route and spoke to those excitedly exploring the new trail. I'm here in Festival Gardens, just outside St Paul's, looking at Morph's Adventure Trail, which is dotted around central London, with 70 of these Morph animation statues. It's created by the charity WizKids, which helps pay for wheelchairs for accessible needs. At the end of the trail, on the 20th of August, these statues will be auctioned off and the money raised goes towards the charity. This particular Morph was designed by Sarah Matthews, who's worked as a graphic designer for Ardman Animations for 13 years. It seeks to highlight the important work that WizKids does in raising money for wheelchair users under 25. I don't think your generation would ever understand it. You have to be a Gen X. Well, you've got to understand we were rebellious from the moment we were born. We asked questions. We didn't do as our told. We had to survive on our own. And Morph basically represents that. He just did his own thing and um, was always getting into trouble. And that was part of what growing up is all about, getting into trouble. Because how else are you going to learn if you don't have your mistakes? If you're just going to obey what you're going to do all the time, it's no point. This particular morph is located just outside St Paul's in Festival Gardens and is aptly named More Flowers Please. The artist was trying to blend humanity and nature in this design. Bruce Green designed this morph to highlight the work that the charity does in helping children in wheelchairs and they've produced the UK's first step-free accessible art trail around London. Join it because we've been to lots of different places and there's a lot of different morphs and the styles of them are really good. But we are missing one, aren't we? We're missing number five, yeah. Number five at uh, More London is missing. And there's one in the city which is a disabled disabled. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's missing because he's been vandalised. So there's just a normal morph that looks it's just, oh, it's just brown. Place. And it says when there's a little plaque that says yeah, he's been. Like, he's in repair, but he'll be back soon, but we couldn't find number five at all. Oh, I think it's got to be the Pyro Morph for me at, at Spitalfield Market. I don't know if I could say, because I need to look back at them all, because you see so many. Um... The Morph Tour was clearly a hit with this accordion player. Back to you in the studio. Month of fantastic events. For more on the capital, tune in next time to Londoners News. This has been Frey Gascoigne and Joseph Palmer. Goodbye. Goodbye.